Hey everyone, we're back with another career day episode and today I'm joined by friend Danielle who is a project development designer. So without going too much into it, Danielle, can you tell us exactly what that means and what you do? So as a project development designer, I work for a company that deals mostly with uh, new constructions of homes. And what I do is I work with the contracts department and I kind of facilitate all of the mill work that goes into everyone's new homes. And so I do the drawings, I do the coordinating for the finishes. um, And of course we go into the meetings with the clients and all of that fun stuff. That's basically what I do. So is this a branch from architecture or interior designing or is this own separate thing? Uh, It's closer to interior designing i'd say because of the level of detail that you get into it and it's based on interior spaces but it is kind of it's in the construction industry so if you go into the architecture route i've seen a lot of um some of my colleagues come from architecture backgrounds interior design backgrounds so it's uh quite varied so danielle and i have actually known each other for a number of years we went to high school together and and i was wondering Could you tell me a little bit about what interests you going into design? Is it something that you always wanted to do or is it something that you found you enjoyed much later? So I always knew that I wanted to do either architecture or interior design in the future. And actually, this was one of the only creative career options that my parents would approve of at the time. So that's what I chose. And here I am. Were there a lot of universities that offered this type of program or is it more college focused? If you could talk a little bit about that. So it's actually a combination of both. Um, In Ontario, not every school, uh, meaning university or college, offers an interior design or architecture program. But the few that we do have in Ontario are great they have great reputations and some of the best are located right here in Toronto so it's great being a high school student so you knew you were interested in art designing that's something you really like to do you thought you could apply it to this field Uh, as you're going through high school were there certain courses that you need and a lot of people always ask about this do you need a strong math and science background because there is a lot of planning and putting things in the right places yes so for interior design specifically You do need one math course. Um, Physics is always recommended as a science course if you can fit that into your schedule, but it is not required. But I'd say the most important part of getting into an interior design program is the portfolio, which is basically a collection of your best work, typically anywhere from five to ten pieces that best represent your creative abilities. And that's the most important thing that professors are going to be assessing you on when you go to the interview. So if you don't mind sharing, what was in your portfolio or what would be something meaningful to put in a portfolio if you're applying to a program like this? In my portfolio, I had a variety of pieces, which some of them were from from the art class that I took in grade 12. Um, Some of them were things that I had done in my spare time. Um, I also included my sketchbook, which kind of just shows the train of thought that goes into all of this work. What I always recommend for anybody who wants to apply for an interior design program is to create a broad collection of artwork that showcases different styles or maybe one style, but different areas of abilities um, just to show what you can really do. So what do you mean by abilities? So for example, in your portfolio, you could have a digital art piece or you can have a painting or you can have a sketch. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, so there's okay. a lot of different mediums that you can use. And I highly encourage you to showcase anything and everything that you can do. And could these be drawings or paintings of anything or is it directly related to design? It can be absolutely anything you wish. Oh boy. <laughs> That's really different because in for business schools, let's say, you may have to write a supplementary essay about why you want to go to the school or, you know, basically talk about your extracurriculars or something, but you're never asked to provide actual work. Mm-hmm. Which I guess in art makes sense because they want to know, you know, your talent level and what type of skills you have. Mm-hmm. I guess the difference is that art is so subjective mm-hmm. and whoever is on the receiving end of your art is going to interpret it 
maybe in a different way from the next person. Uh, so it's always great to have a lot of different ideas and a lot of different ways of expressing yourself. That's always encouraged in the industry. Right. So once you got to university, what kind of classes did you take and what was it like? Because I'm assuming your major was interior design. Yes. So the program specifically was called environmental design. I went to OCAD University for their four year design program. And basically your classes are made up of what we call studio classes and theory classes. Okay, can you talk about maybe what that yeah, is? So studio classes are kind of your core classes um, and they relate mostly to, they're made up of architecture, interior design, building construction and physics. And your theory classes would be made up of more like art history, architectural history, that sort of stuff. Okay, yeah. makes sense. Yeah. So in your experience, what were your favorite classes and what classes were you being taught that you thought, I never even knew this was relevant to this career path or this major, mm -hmm. but ended up helping you a lot? So my favorite class would have been the core studio classes where um, okay. you every semester you have a core studio class and in that class, it's kind of like your home. You know, um, everyone in your class is just sort of like you guys are all really close, it's a smaller class. And every term you get what we call uh, final crits, um, short for critiques. Um, so you okay. have a culminating project and the final crit is basically the last week of class, you get to showcase your work, get feedback from your students and um, the professors. And, you know, there's a lot of blood, sweat and tears that go into that stuff. So um, I can imagine yeah, yeah. we're always there for each other. And that was a really great uh, environment. I'd say were the class sizes big. They are they are small if you're comparing it to your typical university class like it's definitely not like a lecture sized class it's it's made up of probably 20 to 30 students and is that only 20 or 30 students like got into the program or just in your block of classes just in our block of classes every program i think has about 75 students Okay, yeah, so it is a relatively small yeah. acceptance rate compared to how many people apply. Yes. So it's pretty competitive. Yes, it is pretty competitive. So when you were graduating, were there a lot of co-op programs or were there a lot of work as you're studying programs through the school or did you have to find a lot of the work yourself? The school itself doesn't offer any co-ops, okay. but they do offer a nice job board that gives you the ability to work with any professors or um, any mentors uh, that are at the school or in your classes. Um, so they do have okay. a lot of opportunities in that sense. But right. a lot of us had internships throughout school that we would do during the summer and we would just go and get them ourselves. Now, I imagine just because of the nature of the work, that because things are always being built, people always need designers and interior decorators and this type of line of work. Mm -hmm. But did you find it was hard to find jobs out of school with little experience or just doing an internship or maybe even no experience? I don't think it was very difficult for us to find jobs after graduating. A lot of us had already had internship experience or even part-time experience at some firms. And so... Okay. For the most part, I think we all did pretty well after graduating and it, it's great that the industry is so widespread. You don't just have to apply to an interior design firm or an architecture firm. There's a lot of companies that require this skill set. Uh, so we're very fortunate on that end. So for someone like myself, I think my immediate thought would be, okay, if I'm a designer, I'm going to apply to a construction company or architecture firm, like you said. but. Could you give an example then of a company maybe I'm not thinking about that would need a designer or a planner? So a lot of big companies that have retail selling areas such as big banks like RBC or TD actually hire mm. designers as well as a part of their team to design those branches. So if you're not looking into any uh, big company like that, you might want to consider it. That's cool because I guess somebody has to design that, but it's something that I kind of take for granted. Like they're just mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Someone's got to do it. After you graduate, what kind of responsibilities did you have in your first job? And were you able to use a lot of creativity with those jobs or was it a lot of set templates because you were new? So I started working for a smaller company 
uh, as a junior designer. That's where I started out. And the great thing about working for a smaller company is that they don't always have everything uh, completely organized into templates ready to be used. I actually right. had the opportunity to create some of those templates. So that was a really interesting experience um, being a junior designer and uh, having done that sort of creativity on that level and contributing to a company on that level. If you could maybe go into more depth, what was the actual day-to-day -day stuff you would do? Was it overarching projects that you would work on or was there daily tasks that you may have to do every day? Right, so in the life of a designer, you will see a project go from its concept to its uh, production to its installation. Uh, in, in interior design, you're basically imagining a space and then putting it into drawings and then sending it to your client. And if your client approves, then you get right into building it. Um, and so as a junior designer, you do get to be a part of all of those stages. Um, and what's really great is that I, you know, being at a smaller company, I was able to kind of get a closer look at all of those uh, different aspects of the design process. And uh, most of that basically included being a part of the meetings with the client, getting an idea of what they're looking for in their space, doing the drawings, you know, rendering and floor plans and all of that stuff. And then ordering it and getting it ready for production. And then once installed, it's such a satisfying feeling. Okay, so two things. One, when you go to someone's house or apartment now, do you silently judge like this layout I is do. terrible? I do. Or, this layout doesn't make any <laughs> I sense. I do. I do silently judge, but I don't say anything, you know. It's unsolicited so blah, blah, blah. it's unsolicited advice. You can cut that out. <laughs> and secondly, what type of software or skills does somebody need when they first start working in this type of So, role? number 1 is AutoCAD which is a drafting okay. software. So yeah, what is it's that? A, yeah, AutoCAD okay. is a drafting software. Almost every company uses it across whether you get into architecture or interior design or urban planning even. AutoCAD is somewhere in there. So it's, it's always great to learn that. Is that something you can learn on your own or do you have to learn it through school or is it really on the job where you're gonna learn you it? You can learn it yourself, actually. You can definitely learn it yourself. Uh, you can also take courses. There's lots of courses, continuing education courses or online even, that will give you the chance to practice your AutoCAD skills. But the, uh, the sooner you learn it, the better. Okay, so AutoCAD is one. Are there any other softwares? Do you use Photoshop at all? Yep, or? that is kind of the next best thing is any Adobe Photoshop or Illustrator or InDesign, they're all going to be very useful skills to have um, when you get into the industry because you're going to be doing a lot of presenting to the client and you're going to need to be able to manipulate photos in such ways that will make clients fall in love with your work. So you do definitely need those skills. I'd say the last great thing to have in your skill set is rendering, which you will probably learn in in school. So what's rendering for us common <laughs> Sorry, <folk? laughs> okay. Rendering is so yeah, rendering it. is basically a perspective drawing that is done digitally. So you okay. create the model in your computer digitally and then you add uh, realistic aspects to it such as lighting, furniture, okay, shadows and all okay. that stuff to make it look like a, a photorealistic piece. Is this, is this like when they do those condo yes. brochures of like, this is how yes. it'll look like in Absolutely. five years? Absolutely. Okay, got you, got you. Okay, mm -hmm. makes sense. So you mentioned you started out as a junior. What is the typical career path like? Do you go junior de mm -hmm. or designer, then mm -hmm. senior designer, mm -hmm. manager, so on? Like how high can you mm -hmm. go? Um, is there executive mm -hmm. positions and kind of yeah. maybe talk about um, that? So most people start off as junior designers or interns and then okay. probably within half a year to a year later you'll be looking at an intermediate designer position and then after that you'll get into senior designer possibly um, depending on the company that you're at something like team leader or design leader or um, design manager and okay. in terms of being a designer, that's sort of kind of the realm of where you'll be staying. Beyond that, you will be looking at more executive positions where you can maybe be a director 
And at, and at what level would you become client facing? So you're the one talking with the client and figuring out what they want and kind of doing so that. So you stuff. can. So intermediate designers are typically ones that are able to meet with the clients. Okay. Have you personally had a chance to do that yet? I love it. I love every minute of it. Since you've had the opportunity to talk to clients, I guess that's one aspect of the job people don't really think about. They just think you're in this room designing all day, but you do get to be out there talking to clients, consulting them, working with them. And that's something that it sounds like you're starting to enjoy yeah, a lot. So I did that a lot as a, an intermediate designer. And that is one okay. of my one of the greatest feelings is when you can talk to a client and kind of make their dreams come to life. I can imagine it's rewarding because it starts as a blank space and then you turn it into this amazing place for someone either to live or for their Absolutely. office or something. And without maybe getting into too much specifics about your personal experience, but what is the general salary range someone can expect for maybe an entry level and then an intermediate or senior, if you know off the top of your so, head? Uh, just coming out of school, if you get into a junior designer role, you're looking at around 40k per year. Uh, okay. And then intermediate to senior, anywhere from 65 to 75k per year. That was quite mm -hmm. a jump. Wow. And what are the work hours um, like? Depending on the company, the deadlines are harsh. And so right. you could be working really, really long hours one night to meet a deadline and then having kind of like a summer Friday the next night so it really varies is it typically nine to five maybe nine to three let's say until you have deadlines or does it feel like there's always deadlines coming on i guess that's more mm -hmm. company specific there are always deadlines like this stuff never ends but our right. company runs on the nine to five schedule and uh if you if you do need more time to to make the deadline then you gotta do what you gotta do would you say that you're content with your work-life balance i'm very content Okay, well, that's yeah. the most important thing. And as we start to wind down, what are the things that you really enjoy about your work? You kind of mentioned it with the client stuff. And what is something that you didn't expect at all being in a design role? So when you're a designer, um, sometimes you don't always think about the budget of the client. Um, sometimes everybody's just dreaming and you, you kind of want to create this beautiful space. But budget is a very real thing. And as you start to work, Yes, yes, it, it is. is. <laughs> uh, you would know. Yes, it is. Um, but as you start getting into uh, a more intermediate and senior role where you meet with bigger clients, such as actual actual builders of these homes, um, right, they right, have expectations right. on all ends and budget is, is one of the most important ones. So that's always something that you need to consider and something that I didn't really think about until I got into this role. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought of it either, even being yeah. client facing, because I mean, you think your job is just yeah. to design, right? Not to consider other people's budgets. I guess as just to kind of review. So in high school, I, you know, knowing you in high school, I know you always had an artsy <laughs> kind of background. You were good at that stuff. Yeah. And, you know, design was something mm -hmm. you wanted to do. And, you know, you're also very Thank bright. <laughs> so I'm assuming that marks were good. So what would be i know you know we graduated a long time yeah. ago but what were the kind of averages back then or even now if you may know to get into a program like yours or something comparable in terms of getting into an interior design school you will need sort of a high 70s to a low 80s mark to start and then it just gets competitive from there okay. um the other big thing again like i said is the portfolio so that's i'd say probably marks is about the half of it and then the other half is just entirely based on your portfolio so if you are a low 80s student but you have phenomenal work i mean you shouldn't i wouldn't be worried discourage yourself from trying <laughs> i wouldn't be worried yeah yeah well, that's good to know i mean it's important that i think a field like this considers things outside of marks because it is so personal in a way too and art can connect with right. you in such a personal way and so you go to university it's a four-year mm -hmm. program and while you were in school were you finding internships or was your first design job after uh, school? i was finding internships Yes. The thing I also wanted to ask before we end our conversation, are there any designations or certifications that an interior decorator can get? 
In Ontario, to become an official interior designer, you would need to join the Association of Registered Interior Designers of Ontario, otherwise known as ARIDO. This requires three main things, a degree recognized by ARIDO, a certain amount of work experience, typically two years after you graduate, and successful completion of the NCIDQ exam, which is a qualification exam. Um, NCIDQ stands for National Council of Interior Design Qualification. So after graduating, your first step would be to gain experience within the industry uh, while studying for the qualification exam. The Arido requires you to have six years total of education and practical experience combined in order to be registered. Uh, so once you have your experience and the qualification exam, you can apply for a membership with Arido to officially become an interior designer. After it's official, uh, you do have a couple options for your career path. You can move up the ladder at a firm, uh, eventually become a senior designer or director, or you can start your own interior design practice. And once you start working, you know, you've worked at a few places yeah. after that, and you're kind of at your point now. Looking back in all your experiences from high school to university to now, if somebody was, if you saw yourself at 18 or even 16 and said, I want to go into design, what advice would you give yourself now? Sorry, Babe. to my 18 year old self the one mm -hmm. that wanted to go into design school, I would tell her good design doesn't always mean that it should be groundbreaking or avant-garde. For the everyday person, the best designs are often ones that are thoughtfully catered to the user and each element of the design should serve some sort of a purpose. You may have heard the saying, form follows function. My advice would be to use this concept as the foundation of your work, uh, be attentive to your client and their needs, and most of all, make something beautiful out of it because that's what we're here to do. Don't be afraid to really be who you are. I know it sounds cliche, but design is about expressing yourself and what you believe is um, going to work in the real world. And everything creative is subjective. And so not everybody is going to understand your work and you should not be afraid of that. In fact, you should embrace it. And well, I think that's really good <laughs> advice. And I think a lot of people can apply that to, to yep, many areas absolutely. of their life, actually, because, you know, you should be yourself and you shouldn't be afraid mm -hmm. of standing out. Absolutely. Would you also say, would you also have any advice for maybe career wise, like while you're looking for jobs, do you wish maybe you focused on certain things or... Um, are you glad the path that you took is the one you took? Um, I'd say I don't regret, you know, I'm really happy with where I am now. I think one mm -hmm. thing that I might have done better is worked a little harder on the portfolio that I was presenting to um, potential employers. Um, but... Oh, so you had to do the portfolio again yes, for employers. Yes, So, sorry, big thing. Okay. I'm, uh, employers will also, when you're being hired, they will ask to see a portfolio. Yep. So it's, is it transcript really important or is it more the portfolio, the portfolio? Because at the end of the day, it's about what you're able to produce for these companies. Right, um, right. And they kind of just want to see what you can do. And a portfolio is the best way to show that. Cool. Well, I have to say you are the, well, I know one other person in architecture and you're the only other person I know that's in that type of yeah. field in design. So this was a lot of new information for me. And I think for a lot of people, because most of my friends are in business or whatever. Yeah. So I appreciate you sharing your experience Absolutely. and your story. Because I think what you do is so important, but it's something that the average person doesn't even think twice about. Going into a mall or going into a store and everything's laid out so right. meticulously. Yeah. And somebody did somebody that, Somebody right? did that. So. That's right. So I appreciate your Thank time. You for having and, me. You know, happy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if we ever have any more questions, I'll be sure to bring yeah. you back here. But, you know, I really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, everyone, that wraps up that career day episode about design. If you're interested in hearing more content about more careers, remember to hit like and subscribe and leave some comments if you learned something or have any more questions for Danielle. Thank you and have a nice day. One thing I wanted to ask too. Oh. <laughs>